your goal is fat burning, you think your body is going to want to burn off carbohydrates and glucose? No. If the goal is fat burning, you want to be burning off stored fat, stored adipose tissue. None of y'all stopping me. Don't need to ask. Chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes. Crossing eyes, stopping T's. Lines are blurred, I cannot see. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, look. This is the moment I waited. I took all my options and weighed them. What's going on, YouTube? You're back with the Prez. Out here in Juniper Park today. Today I'm doing a post strength session. But instead of showing you guys the routine today, we're gonna to be talking about something. The last video I just posted, talking about cardio, fasting, and muscle loss. So, so to continue on that topic, today we're gonna to be talking about training and diet. Proper nutrition for training, how you guys should be programming your meals, protein, carbs, and fats, when you guys should be having them, depending on your goals. Remember, I'm, I'll be going through whether you're lean, trying to build muscle or whether you're overweight or not so overweight or just trying to cut down on body fat and get a little lean. I'll be telling you how you can manipulate the calories and the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins, when to utilize them best for your workouts, etc, etc. So like I said, today's going to be a pull strength session. So in between these, in between this video, I'm just going to be cutting it off a little bit, throwing some sets in. So like I said, today's video is going to teach you guys about proper nutrition for training. Before we get into that, we have to backtrack a little bit and give you guys a little bit of science. Give you guys a little bit of lesson how the body works, how it utilizes the macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats, what they prefer for energy, etc., etc. So, as you guys know, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, three macronutrients, the only three sources of energy that your body could store and absorb and use to make and disperse energy, right? Energy being ATP, creatine phosphate, cellular energy. Now, there's different type of pathways that your body want to run off of. Going back to my cardio video talking about fat burning. If your goal is fat burning, what do you think the substrate that your body should be utilizing to burn off? If your goal is fat burning, you think your body would want to burn off carbohydrates and glucose? No. If the goal is fat burning, you want to be burning off stored fat, stored adipose tissue, which comes mostly from the fat ingested in your diet, right? That comes aerobic activity slow steady state aerobic activity that is the best bet for burning fat now when it comes to muscle building and training resistance training this is what this video's topic is really going to be about so people often ask me when they should have carbs when they should not have carbs what's the best way to fuel their exercise so like i said i'm going to give you guys a little bit of background of the body and how it breaks down these carbohydrates fats and proteins the main source of energy that your body wants to use to power through resistance training. Resistance training means external load. You're breaking down glycogen. It's the opposite of cardio. Cardio is an aerobic activity. Resistance training is anaerobic. Remember, anaerobic means no oxygen to the muscles. Aerobic means your muscles can get oxygen while you're doing the exercise. Aerobic activity lasts longer. Cardio sessions last longer than resistance training sets. Remember, one set of a resistance training exercise such as a bench press or a set of pull-ups usually will last you anywhere between 5 to maybe 60, 90 seconds depending on how long the set is, how many reps you're doing. If you're doing cardio, you're not doing 90 seconds of aerobic activity, right? You're doing longer bouts. So cardio, one of the best bets you guys could use for cardio to burn fat is to let it use your body's fat for energy sources so it burns it. So I preach if your guy's goal is fat loss and you're doing cardio, Either do it in a fasted state or just keep the carbs obsolete before the training session. Only use protein and fats to, to fuel your workout so your body can only burn off fat that's stored and will have no glucose to pull from, right? No glucose circulating in the blood. Getting back to science now. What happens when your body ingests carbohydrates? Remember, carbohydrates break down into glucose. Glucose is the simplest form of sugar. So as soon as you eat any type of carbohydrate, whether it be broccoli, a piece of bread, once it gets digested and hits the bloodstream, it is circulating in the bloodstream as glucose. What happens then? Remember, high blood sugar levels is a sign of diabetes and low blood sugar levels is a sign of hypoglycemia. So, two bad states. What the body does to combat this is it 
is it releases insulin from the pancreas. The role of insulin is to shuttle that glucose that's in the blood now into where it has to go. Remember, eat carbohydrates, the blood is going to get full of the glucose. What the pancreas then does, it releases insulin and the insulin binds to the glucose and it sends it to where it needs to go in the body. If it has a reason to go to the muscles, the insulin will send it to the muscles. If it doesn't have a reason to go to the muscles, it's going to be stored as body fat. It's going to be stored as adipose tissue and be converted into body fat. That's when, that's when you hear people say, you eat too many carbs, it turns into fat. Only happens if you cannot utilize the carbohydrates efficiently. So, remember, let's take it again. You eat broccoli, it's going to break down into glucose. You eat a piece of bread, it's going to break down into glucose. The difference between the two is the rate at which it disperses the sugar in the blood. You guys have he heard of complex carbohydrates, you guys have heard of simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates raise the blood sugar faster, meaning a piece of white bread would be considered a simple sugar. Why? So when you ingest it, it hits the bloodstream fast. The sugar gets broken down into sugar fast, and now the bloodstream is filled with that sugar quickly. Take a piece of broccoli or a sweet potato known as a complex carbohydrate. Complex meaning it's complex. It takes a little longer for the body to break down. So the sugar rush in the body and the blood is not as sudden and it's not such an urge. There isn't such a need for so much insulin instantly. So if you're eating a piece of white bread, your insulin spike will be high. Why? Because the white bread is breaking down fast and it's going to cause a spike in blood sugar, which is going to cause a spike in insulin release. If you do that too often during the day and the body has nowhere to shuttle that glucose, now remember, once you have glucose in the blood, the insulin is released from the pancreas. Now, if you have a reason to shuttle it into the muscles, the insulin will shuttle that glucose into the muscles and it will be stored as glycogen. If there is no reason for it to be stored in the muscles as glycogen, it'll be stored in the liver and it'll also be stored as adipose tissue and be converted into fat. Remember, it has to have a reason to be stored as muscle glycogen. Now let's take it one step back again. We've got simple carbohydrates, white bread, white sugar, fruit juices, fruit juices, things like that will raise the blood sugar fast, cause a big surge in the insulin release. Now again, if your body doesn't have a reason to utilize that sugar, it's just gonna keep getting stored in the liver and in the uh, adipose tissue as fat. And that's when you hear sugar makes you fat. When I say your body has a reason to utilize it and store it as glycogen, how would it do that? Resistance training. Remember, resistance training breaks down muscle glycogen. Aerobic training, cardio, does not break down glycogen stores as the same way that it does as resistance training. Prolonged cardio will break down glycogen because it's gonna pull from energy reserves from the muscles. Resistance training is specific to the muscles. If you're doing push-ups, the chest muscles are getting depleted of their glycogen short stores. So if you have a chest day, all the glycogen stores in your chest, your tricep, your shoulder muscles are gonna get depleted. Depleting through exercise, right? External loads, whether you're doing push-ups, bench press, it doesn't matter. Resistance training is gonna break down that glycogen. When you're done resistance training and your muscles are depleted, what do you think would be the best way to replenish glycogen? That's when you want to ingest a fast digesting carbohydrate, a simple or sugar, right? You guys have heard me talk about that in the past. I'll sip on pre-digested carbohydrates while I train or they'll be in my post-workout shape. As soon as you're done training, you want to have immediately you want to ingest protein broken down into amino acids and carbohydrates. Whether that protein comes from a whey protein shake or just simple amino acids, it doesn't matter. You want to have those aminos in your system along with the carbohydrates immediately post-workout that is what's going to replenish the glycogen store so remember if you're taking a carbohydrate based powder like i do or if you're going to post-workout instead of having a powder immediately have a simple carbohydrate like a rice cake or a piece of white bread remember that's going to cause the blood sugar to raise instantly now if that blood sugar is circulating in the bloodstream and the insulin is released and the muscles are depleted where is that blood going to be? Where is that blood glucose going to go now? It's going to be shuttled right back into the muscles, as opposed to being stored in the body fat and then back into the liver. You're going to shuttle all that glucose that you just ingested post-workout in a simple sugar. You're going to shuttle all that into the muscles, and that's going to replenish the glycogen stores. So I want you guys to think about times that you want to spike your insulin. Think about it like that. 
You want to spike your insulin, meaning you want to have a simple sugar when your body has a reason to utilize it. When will your body have a reason to utilize it? When it's just broken down muscle, when it's just broken down glycogen. So that's the only time you guys should really focus on eating simpler, fast digesting carbs. Post-workout, when you're in a depleted state. Now let's go to pre-workout nutrition. Pre-workout nutrition is gonna be a little different for most, for most people. Post-workout, when it comes to that replenishment, I'll tell my overweight clients and I'll tell clients that are lean as well, replenish your glycogen stores. That should be your main source of carbohydrates post-workout. Whether you're doing it with a shake or you're doing it with whole foods, whole foods as a, such as white rice, white potatoes, along with your protein source. Remember, you don't have to have a protein shake right away. You guys could eat if you guys could eat. Preferably, it'd be better if you guys have a whole food meal as opposed to having a shake just to teach you guys how to ingest more protein without having to worry about external supplements. So remember, post-workout, you guys want protein and simple sugars. You want to keep the fats low. Pre-workout, if you're lean like myself, right? And me, I train midday, around 12 o'clock. I'm up every day at 6 a.m. So I'm up for six hours during the day, and I'm pretty active during the day. So pre-workout meal for me, which you guys have seen in my videos, I usually have about 90 minutes prior to training. And it switches up all depending on my goals. You guys see when I'm cutting, and which I guys have told you guys in the past, if your goal is to overall body fat loss, you wanna maintain as much muscle as possible, but just lose body fat. Pre-workout, there's no need for you guys to ingest carbohydrates. Your main sources of nutrients should come from protein and healthy fats. Remember, if you do not give your body carbohydrates to burn off, it will utilize the fat stores. And if you guys have extra fat to burn, if your goal is to get lean, I'm talking about people that are 15% body fat and above. As low as 15%, you do not need to ingest pre-workout carbohydrates in order to fuel your workout. Your body has plenty of stored energy on it already. Remember, your muscles have glycogen stored, your body has fat stored. The first thing it's gonna pull from is the fat stores if you're giving it no carbohydrates. The second you start feeding your body carbohydrates and glucose, that's what it's gonna wanna switch to for fuel. If you keep your nutrients, the protein and fat before your workout, it's gonna have no choice but to pull from those fat stores first. And then once it depletes its fat stores, which it won't do for a good 90 minutes at the training, then you may start pulling from your glycogen stores. So listen, if your goal pre-workout, if your goal is to lose some body fat, maintain as much muscle mass as possible, one, I don't recommend training in a fasted state because if you're training fasted, and I mean training, resistance training, lifting external loads, whether it be your body weight or external weights, training fasted will, no matter what, pull from muscle storage, no matter what. Because remember, if you're training fasted, you're already in a fasted state. So you're already depleted some fat stores and you're already starting to deplete glycogen your stores. And the second you start doing resistance training, your body's gonna already wanna pull from that glycogen stores because it's in that fasted state. So if your goal is to lose weight and you want to train fasted, ingest amino acids. Sip on amino acids during your workouts. And I would also recommend at the same time, sip on a pre-digested carbohydrate powder like the one I do. Simple organic carbohydrates while you're training will help your body from pulling from those muscle stores and it'll help it just use that simple glucose that you're giving it during the workouts and the aminos that's circulating. That Remember, sipping on aminos and carbohydrates that are pre-digested, they're gonna go right to the bloodstream. They're gonna be an immediate source of energy for your body. That's if your goal is fat loss and you wanna train fasted. Now, if you're somebody like me and you train midday and your goal is fat loss, I would recommend having two meals. Your first meal in the morning should be, again, protein and fats. And then wait about two hours, and then 90 minutes before you train, another meal of protein and fats. And if you wanna have some carbs, berries vegetables, keep the starches low. Don't give your body a reason to pull from anything else but body fat. Now, that's for people that their goal is to lose body fat. Now, when it comes to somebody like myself, I'm relatively lean right now. I told you guys I woke up on the scale about 160 pounds, 11% body fat. Didn't quite hit my goal of 10%, but it is what it is. I don't want to drop under this 160 pounds. So if you're somebody like myself, like I said, I train midday. My first meal, Always during the morning, I try to keep myself in a fat burning state, which you can do. Like I've said in the past, how do you keep yourself in a fat burning state? By not feeding yourself glucose, not feeding myself carbohydrates. So I wake up in the morning and you guys know all I eat all the time is eggs, 
turkey bacon, and sometimes I'll have bone broth, sometimes I won't. Proteins and fats, and of course the sauerkraut. Sauerkraut's gonna be considered a carbohydrate, but it's one gram, and it's pretty much all fiber. It's not gonna be digested or utilized as energy, and it's all for gut health. That's not a source of energy, sauerkraut. So, main meal, first morning, first meal I have every morning, as you guys have seen in my full day of eating, and which I recommend somebody who's lean to, just to keep your body in that fat burning state, keep your meal to proteins and fats. Now, if you train after that first meal, then that first meal, I would definitely recommend having some slow digesting carbohydrates. I would have eggs as a source of protein and fat, some turkey bacon, and maybe an oatmeal on the side or a sweet potato, a slow digesting carb. That would be for somebody who trains mid-morning. So one meal in the morning, if you're still lean and your goal is to put on muscle now, Remember, if your goal is to put on muscle, you don't want to be pulling from anything else but energy that you're giving it. Your goal is to maintain as much glycogen and maintain as much muscle mass throughout the training session. So if your goal is muscle building and you're lean like mine is and you train mid-morning, one meal prior, proteins, carbs, and fats, but you want to keep the carbs now not simple because simple is going to elevate the blood sugar fast and you don't want that pre-workout. Because remember, you still got glycogen stores in your muscles. You want a slower digesting carb. So while you're training, that carbohydrate is digesting slowly throughout the bloodstream, throughout the bloodstream, steadily providing you with a source of carbohydrates to fuel you through that workout. Not so much going to burn through those carbohydrates that are that stored in the muscles already. So, two different types of goals, right? If you're lean and your goal is to build muscle, and you're somebody like me, I train midday, so I have two meals prior. My first meal, protein and fats. The second meal I have during the day. Now I keep it protein and carbohydrates because I'm active throughout the morning and I've already burned throughout some glycogen stores. Remember, I train 12 o'clock up from 6 a.m. So if you're somebody like me who likes to train midday, I recommend having two meals. The second meal, that's when you want to have your slow digesting carbohydrate. First meal of the day, keep your body in that fat burning mode. Only ingest protein and carbs. If you're somebody that's lean and you train mid-morning, try to get one meal in, proteins, slow digesting carbs, healthy fats, and if you're overweight or your goal is just in general to lose body fat, there is no need to ingest any carbohydrates pre-workout. Whether you train mid-morning, midday, or in the evening, push your carbohydrates to post-workout because your body will just keep burning and pulling from fat stores throughout the day until you give it carbohydrates and a reason to utilize them. So remember, simple sugars, simple carbohydrates, that's the time to ingest them when you want to think about spiking your insulin. Think about that, guys. If you eat a simple sugar, your insulin's gonna spike. That's not a good state to be in most of the time. The only time your body wants to be in that state is when your body has a reason to shuttle that glucose somewhere fast. And then when it's gonna shuttle it fast is when the muscles are depleted and when it wants it. Simple sugars, remember, white bread, white rice, white potatoes. You'll hear people eating these candies after they work out. Oh, I'm eating candies for replenishment fast because those are simple sugars. Not something I recommend. They're not gonna teach you good habits. Keep it to whole food sources still. White bread, rice cakes, white rice. Simple sugar post-workout. Remember, you want to have that simple sugar with protein. You want to keep the fats minimal post-workout. You want to let that absorb fast. The fats are going to slow down the digestion. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight about training and nutrition. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments section. Leave me an email. Don't forget, like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share. Hit that notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. And I hope this helped you guys out, taught you guys something. Like always, guys, peace out. Bar Naturals. And they all love to talk, you know they do that shit the most. Think you on my level, boy, but you ain't even close.